If you change your mind, you change your life, just change your mind. The Lord loves you. He's standing with his arms wide open for you. Oh, 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 oh. Be encouraged, cause this day's for you. Don't you let this opportunity pass by. Good evening, everybody. I'm Minister Todd Clark. Thank you for joining us here at Changing Your Mind Ministries for Let the House Speak. I am so excited, guys, not only because it's Friday, but because I really, truly believe that we have a word for everyone, including for myself. So let us pray. God, we thank you for your wisdom, for your clarity in who we are. God, we thank you for who you've called us to be. I dare not speak to your people without your guidance, without your instructions, without your wisdom. Therefore, God, walk through this message along with me and your people, God. Thank you for not allowing my issues to be greater than your word. Holy Spirit, he who lives in me, speak, teach, lead, guide. I am available in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Now, I know that you guys do not think that I believe that each and every last one of you closed your eyes and bowed your head. But even if you didn't, we're getting ready to jump into this word. So do me a huge favor. Grab your pen, grab your paper, and let's get started. I'm going to be reading this evening from Ecclesiastes 4 verses 9 through 10, and I'm coming from the King James Version. And it says, Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he has not another to help him up. The title of this message is, you got me? That's a question, by the way. You got me? Guys, here's the deal. I don't think in my 47 years that I have ever felt the pain, the disappointment, the celebration, and the excitement towards understanding in the relationships as I did in 2020. Last year, I can admit, some of my relationships it's even hard for me to say right now. Some of my relationships look like they were going through the beat down for real. Like I lost some relationships and I gave up on some relationships. So God has really been speaking to me concerning agreement in relationships. So the title of the message is, you got me. Like, not just do you have my back, but even when I need you, when I don't want to have you around, you got me. So what does that even mean for us? How dare we even ask that? And some people might say, how do you even come to have an expectation of someone in this manner? Guys, I am a question person. I will question you to death. Anybody that has been around me for, let's just say, 10 to 15 minutes knows that before I'm done, I'm going to ask a question. I'm a question person. I'm not surfacy. I love details. One of my greatest pastimes is talking, having conversation. I love understanding. I love getting answers. But most importantly, I chase it. I love to listen. I like to be able to say that I can ask a question, and even if you don't have the answer, you just simply say, Todd, I don't know. But I still chase for understanding. And here's why. Because even when I was younger, for some odd reason, I just could not be satisfied. 
until it all started to make sense. Because this allows me to be able to gauge my relationships. And engaging my relationships, this also has included the loss of relationships, the gaining of new relationships. Questions require you to think. Questions require you to make assessments. They stop you in your tracks. They help you to see if your words in your relationships are valued or if you value the words of the other person that you're in the relationship with. Let me slow down. Questions. They call us to the forefront. They call our responsibilities to each other to the forefront. Let me tell you something really quick that I'm sure everybody who's watching will believe. When we were in school, you remember the teacher would always say, class is dismissed. Unless, right? Unless someone has a question. You know, good and well, I done raised my hand. Why? Because I'd rather hold a whole class up. Everybody sitting there mad probably cussing little old me out, but I didn't care. I'm focused. I have a question. And sometimes it didn't seem to be as important to everybody else, but because I did not have the answer or because I felt like there was something missing in the answer that I had, I needed to know. So I would stop the whole process of us being able to be dismissed, knowing good well we've been wanting to get out of class probably the last hour, well, let's just say as soon as we got there, I would stop the process because I have to ask. Here's what I've learned. You can't grow without questions. You can't know without questions. Now, I know sometimes you guys see me and I'm trying to be a rapper. I was not trying to rap right there, but hey, you see how that worked out. Let's get back on track. You can't grow without questions. You can't know without questions. No questions, no intimacy, which means there's no getting to know me, which leads to no agreement, no connection, no relationship. I have learned that we cannot do life alone, but I've also learned that when life has gotten hard, I was left standing alone. So now I have to ask you, you got me? Do you have me? We getting ready to find out. Throughout the Bible, God encourages us to ask questions. He says things like this. Ask and it will be given. Call on me and I will answer. Come, let's reason together. Listen, guys, our God is a relational God. He knows that we need trusted relationships, and he knows that we need reliable partnerships. Listen to my words carefully in order to help the development of our growth. And then King Solomon, the writer of Ecclesiastes, with all of his wisdom, he even acknowledges that there are advantages to fellowship, to partnership, to mutual encouragement of one another. Mutual encouragement between two people. Stop right there for a second. Take a deep breath. And say with me quickly, I need people. I need people. Sometimes that's one of the toughest things for us to say because a lot of our growth and development we want to say that we did it ourselves. We want to say that we did it by ourselves. I taught myself that. I showed myself that. I built my own strength in that. But here's the deal. If it was not for relationships in itself, our growth and development could not be measured. So again, stop for a second and say, I need people. Let's look at the scripture really quickly. I won't hold you long. Verse 9 says, two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. 
here's some different translations because I like to get a better understanding as to um, what this what this particular scripture is saying. So here's a translation. Two people are better off than one for they can help each other succeed. Two are better off than one because together they can work more effectively. One more. You are better having a friend than to be all alone because then you will get more enjoyment out of what you earn. So let's get your pens and paper out really quickly. We're going to talk about verse 9 before we move on to verse 10. Verse 9 says, two are better. Let's keep up with those two words, the word two and the word better. The word two here in this scripture means cardinal. Cardinal means of great importance or devotion. The word two means serving as a hinge. So the meaning of it is cardinal. Cardinal means great, of great importance and devotion, serving as a hinge. So two serves as a hinge. Now we know when we think about a hinge, we're thinking about a hinge that's on a door. That's a device that allows the door to turn, to go in and out, right? But when we're talking about it, in relationship to you and I and our relationship, what it is saying is that the two of us allows our development together to turn. Am I making sense so far? I hope so. So when we get to the word better, better means a good agreement. It means good and agreeable. There's a pattern of cooperation that when we walk in agreement to produce an agreeable, a good reward. So now I know you might think, well, I agree with a lot of people. I agree with a lot of things. But this scripture is talking about our development towards the success of who God calls us to be. I'm trying to be careful with my words because I don't want to encourage you to just attach yourself to any type of agreement. This is agreement. This agreement is talking about a relationship that leads us to where we ought to be, to where God has called us to be. So if we are two and we are a hinge, that means that there is some reciprocation going on. There's a mutual exchange. There is a constant flow of giving and taking. This prepares us for verse 10. Before we get to verse 10, I, will, I want you to understand that the hinge of our relationship, the development, the maturity, the growth, it is dependent on us. There's, there's nothing going on to the left or to the right. We're looking at us and what we bring to our relationships. So verse 10 says, for if they fall, one will lift up his fellow. The word fall here means to settle. Before we go into this, check this out. I need to ask you one more time. Actually, it's not one more time. I need to ask you again. You got me? According to verse 9, I ask a question. You got me? Now we're in verse 10. We're prepared because we have agreement. We've decided that our hinge is turning towards our growth and development towards a good reward. Now verse 10 says, for if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. Did you notice that it says, for if they fall, right? So that means that if the both of us fall, one of us has to decide that we can't stay down. One of us has to decide to get up. 
it means that I can't stay down. Now, guys, don't get caught up on me saying I. I'm saying I because I can only talk about my part, right? We're a hinge, so you have to do your part, and I have to do mine. So if, according to Scripture, for they fall, the one will lift his fellow up, that means that one of us has to remember that the agreement is great enough to get up. Our agreement has to be stronger than our settling. So a fall means to settle. That means that I have to choose not to compromise in staying and settling, which allows me to come to you and say, get up, pick up your gift, come on, I need you. Remember, we said we need people. So if fall means to settle, that means that I have to think about what our agreement was and how are we settling in this moment? And how can I help you up? But many times, guys, when people come to help us up, we see that as being insensitive to our moment. And I understand that. But listen, and I'm saying this and I mean it. I will never be insensitive to your moment. But I refuse to be insensitive to your purpose. That means that I'm going to come. I'm going to help you get up if you allow me to, but I'm coming to help you get up with your purpose in mind. So if I have to choose between your moment and your purpose, guess what? I'll choose your purpose every single time. We can't compromise our agreement because we're headed towards a good reward. So guys, this is where I can see the change in me personally. Because I remember there was a time when I settled. And not only did I settle, we settled. And not only did we settle, we gathered other people to settle and we were happy about settling. Like it was the thing to do. If you fallen, it makes you look like you that bad A chick. You the one that don't care who run up on you. You the one that don't care what nobody say. I don't, you know the rest, right? Settling. I'm waddling. I'm doing things I don't have any business. But here's the change. I no longer want to settle. I no longer want to be in a relationship with another person that does not come to me and say, Ty, get your tail up. You don't have the right to stay where you are. That doesn't mean that I don't have the process or have to go through the process of getting up, but it means that I know that someone is there to help me up that is leading me to my purpose. Not to more mess, but leading me to my purpose. I have to have someone who refuses to come over with me to my pity party. I have to have someone in my life who refuses to go backwards, even when I'm pulling them to come with me and it's in the wrong direction. I need someone who won't settle, who won't let me settle. I need someone who won't let me sit in my waist. It gets pretty funky when you're sitting in your own waist. My pity party can't be more important than my getting up. My pity party can't be more important than the person who has their hand out that says, yeah, the both of us have fallen, but check this out. Girl, I'm up. And if I can get up, you can get up. And I don't care what you say. I'm not going to let you stay there. But guess what? I have to want that. I have to make that decision to allow them to help me. So when I come to help you up or when you come to help me up, we're not trying to belittle you or trying to 
put you in a position where you have to be ashamed. But I'm simply saying, you don't have to stay there. You don't have to settle. Because your purpose is greater than this. God has a calling over your life. And if you settle, you're going to miss it. You're going to miss it. And now we have to go back to the hinges, to our agreement. If you remember, our agreement is towards a good reward. According to verse 9, our relationship, again, I'm repeating this so that we can hold on to this thing and see ourselves as a hinge. According to verse 9, our relationship is a hinge that allows the development of the turning of our growth. You get it? Let's go to verse 10. The second part of verse 10, sorry. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he hath not another to help him up. Here's some translations really quickly. But if you fall without having a friend nearby, you are really in trouble. I'm sure that's the message version because that's my favorite. You know, that's that get down, dirty, get it, get it version of the Bible where if you try to act like you don't understand King James, the message version comes to you and says, hey, let me tell you, if you fall without having a friend nearby, girl, boy, child, you know how we do. You're going to be in trouble, right? The next one says, if someone is alone and falls, it's just too bad because there is no one to help him. So here's a question. Don't forget, I'm a question person. Here's a question. Why would you want to be alone? Why do you want to be alone? Here's another question. Why would you want to be alone and fall alone and settle alone, knowing that in the beginning, you and I had an agreement to be a hinge in our development of relationship? Why? Are you fighting me when you know that the agreement said that if you fall, I would come and help you up? That speaks to how you value relationships. It speaks to how you value our relationship. That speaks to the cost that you're willing to pay to become your own counsel. If I can't help you get up, if you won't let me help you get up, knowing that we had an agreement in the beginning, you are causing the hinges of our relationship to rust. You're causing our relationship to slow down and ultimately come into a screeching halt. If I have my hand out, and you know that my hand is out towards your good and you don't want it, woe to you. Scripture says, woe to you. Here comes great sorrow. Here comes distress. Here comes the pain. You know how that works. Here comes the consequences of you choosing to be alone. So here's another question. What's the payoff? What's the payoff of being alone? What's the payoff of telling yourself that you are alone? Not just for the agreement for if we fall or just in case we fall, but we had a agreement, an agreement to develop, an agreement to turn an agreement towards our great success. What is the payoff for wanting to be alone? What are you getting out of it when you don't have to be alone? 
So what keeps our hinges turning, so to speak? What keeps us from rusting? What helps us to continue to go towards the good success that God has for us? I'm beginning to understand this about my own relationships. What keeps us going is my understanding that the hinges of our relationship, the two of us, is going to cost us something. What is the cost? The cost is that we learn to stay present in our reality. So that means if you know that we are in agreement towards a good success, right? That when you fall, when things happen, and they do, and they will, that you will remember that our agreement is that I will come help you, that I will remember that in our agreement, you will come help me. So the cost of staying focused means that I have to check myself. The other cost is to fight for our agreement. The hinge, protect the development of our relationship. The other thing is going to cost us. It's going to cost us our egos, guys. It's going to cost us our pride. That thing that stands between me and you that tells me that I don't have to come to you and say that I was wrong. That thing that stands between you and I when I know that you tried to help me, but instead of me letting you know that I wanted the great success, I just didn't know how to handle the great success. I wanted the relationship. I just didn't know how to handle the relationship. I needed you, but I told myself I didn't need you. That prideful place that won't allow you to come back to our agreement and at least make it right, it costs. We have to pay the price of letting those things go so that we can have our hinge still turning. It also means that I have to recognize that I can't be so into myself that I forget or don't recognize what I'm doing to us. I'm going to say that again. It means that I can't be so into me that I don't recognize what I'm doing to us, our relationship. We have to be willing to check our mindset. And guys, sometimes that feels costly. It feels like we're giving up something that we've already paid the price for. It feels like I don't want to come and allow you to help me because if I do, that means that that person that I created, not necessarily the person God created being where I ought to be, it means the person that I created in my mind has to go because I have to teach myself, talk to myself, walk through my reality in order to understand that who I am affects who we can become. You got me? Now is the question making sense? You got me? Listen, here's my heart. No one is perfect. No one will get it right all the time. Not even me. But there has to be a continual development. There has to be a turning of our maturity, a turning of our growth in order for us together to have an agreeable success. If it's going to cost me something, I need to make sure that I get my money's worth. If it's going to cost me something, I want to see that my reward is even greater than what I paid for it. That's just how I feel about it now. Relationships were hard in 2020. It gave us black eyes, literally. We have 
struggled to maintain relationships. Struggled to maintain. But the way we maintain it, guys, is to go back to the agreement. Check your hinges. Are they turning? Are they rusting? Have they come to a screeching halt? And if so, is it because we refuse to pay the cost to change? Here's our takeaway. A successful relationship will always take you back to the agreement of reaching our goals. Settling keeps us from our good, agreeable reward, our success. Our relationship comes with a cost. In order for our development in our relationship to continue to turn, I have to ask you, you got me? God, we thank you. Thank you for correction. Thank you for a relationship. Thank you for those relationships that ended and the ones that began. God, going forward, we're going to fight for the agreement towards our good reward, towards what you called us to be. If I reach my hand out, God, let it be because it's going towards an agreeable purpose. If they reach their hand out, God, Let me know and understand with wisdom that they are reaching out because they're trying to get me to my good reward. Guys, everybody needs partnership. It's God's way. It's the way he designed us to be. And you don't have to do life alone. Nobody has to do life alone. Christ came that you might have life, that I might have life. There is a partnership that is always waiting for you. Right now, we're going to have call to salvation. I'm letting you know that it's called to salvation because I want you to see that God partners with you through Jesus Christ. And if you want that partnership, if you know that not only do you need people, but you need God, you want to have everlasting life, but even an everlasting life in this life, we're not just trying to exist, we're ready to live. And if that's you, if you're ready for that partnership, pray with me, repeat after me. Say, God, I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord, and I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. It is with my heart that I believe, and it is with my mouth that I confess. I make known that Jesus is my Lord, and he is my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. And just like that, you're saved and you have a relationship with God through his son, Jesus Christ. God, we thank you for everything that you're doing in our lives, everything that you're doing in our lives. Guys, if you would like to give to our ministry here at Changing Your Mind Ministries, we have four ways to give. If you'll just look at the screen, you will see that you're able to give on our website at www.cymm.org forward slash give. Also on Givelify app, select Changing Your Mind Ministries. You will see our logo. You also can mail your offerings to Changing Your Mind Ministries at 9 Beth Drive, 
Greenville, South Carolina, 29609. And we have Cash App, dollar sign, we are CYM. You guys have a blessed Friday and a wonderful weekend.